not sitting next to a fireplace with a cigar reading a book is Bruce Apar. <laughs> and he's, I think, still Bazo. And you're watching Bruce the Blago's Bazo. Good evening, everybody. <laughs> Everybody, uh, excuse us. We were just in a conversation with Catherine Borgia about Woodstock, of course. What else would we be talking about? Uh, anyhow, uh, we do want to welcome our guest, Catherine Borgia, a uh, Westchester you. County legislator for District 9. And we're going to be, uh, you know, having a uh, very interesting conversation with Catherine and her, you know, very uh, rich recent background. Um, and first, of course, we want to do our salute of the week. And uh, it, it occurs to me that with uh, April Fool's Day right around the corner, that we should we should salute April Fool's Day because <laughs> one of the uh, one of the things that also occurs to me, Bazo and Catherine, is that uh, maybe it's just my um, advanced age, but it seems like there used to be a lot more creativity surrounding April Fool's Day with you know with pranks, with good-natured pranks, of <laughs> course, you know nothing uh, harmful or destructive, but a lot of that seems to have gone away. I, I'm just going to quickly read something from Info, please, which is. Um, you know, let's say the thinking man's Wikipedia, um, that April Fool's Day, uh, its origins aren't certain. Uh, some see it as a celebration related to the turn of the seasons. Um, but this is the most interesting part, and I'm just going to quickly read this paragraph. Ancient cultures, including those of the Romans and Hindus, celebrated New Year's Day on or around April 1. So part of the history of April Fool's Day is New Year's Day for those ancient cultures. Mm -hmm. um, and then it talks about that April Fool's Day closely follows the vernal equinox, March 20 or 21. Uh, this year, spring begins on March 20, which happens to be my birthday. Oh, um, oh happy birthday. Uh, thank you. Um, anyhow. How old so, are you going to be? Huh? I'm going to be, uh, you know, as old as I ever was. Anyhow, <laughs> I'm going to be older than I ever was. Um, but here's the thing. Uh, with April Fool's Day, you know, it says here uh, that it used to be called All Fool's Day. Well. Officially, it's called All Fool's Day, <laughs> and here's the point I want to make, and now, now I'm going to get up, where's the soapbox? <laughs> uh, that, again, you know, there's not enough creativity anymore on April Fool's Day, and you know what we have, unfortunately? Instead of, instead of the wit that comes with really clever pranks, we have the witlessness of online commenters, and you know where I'm going now, because I've done this before, <laughs> the cowardly commenters, as I call them, who go online with their witless, <laughs> clueless comments, you know, lies, uh, often ugly lies, not that anybody's ever said anything about me <laughs> or <laughs> Bazo <laughs> or anybody I work for. Um, and, and, and so, you know, what I think when you, when you look at what goes on online with some of the, these ridiculous mm -hmm. comments and lies, every day is all fool's day for those people <laughs> because they're all fools. <laughs> Anyhow, we want to thank um, the Penny Saver because we are brought to you by Chase Media Group, uh, publisher of the Penny Saver and uh, CEO Carla Chase and Chief Strategic Officer Frank Rich, and we for thank them up with for, us. for putting up with us. <laughs> and then also, quickly, folks, um, you know, we'd like to remind you, was, um, you know, there's, there's, this has a very special place for some of the people who work here at Cablevision especially, that on May 19, the Poughkeepsie Walk of the American Diabetes Association takes place at Poughkeepsie High School. Uh, it's 9 to a.m. to 12 noon on uh, Saturday, May 19, and you can go to uh, diabetes.org slash step out to get more information on that. So that's, do you have a salvo of the week, Bezo? Not really, because uh, uh, I want to, I don't want to, I want to deal with because she's got a rich past, right. mm -hmm. and we've got a lot of present breaking news, even though this shall show on the 29th, we have breaking news that had happened right. with the passage of the uh, new pension reform. I don't want to take right. away the time from that. So oh, okay, right, I'll let go, you yeah. go right at them. Our guest, <laughs> Kathy okay. Borgia, right. nice and by Legislative you? District 9. By the way, just one quick footnote to what I was saying, because you know how I say, don't assume people know what you're talking about until you explain it. Mm. When I was referring to cowardly commenters, I only mean people who will not put their actual names on comments right. and yet will attack people. Now, there are some people who put their pseudonym on, 
what they say is innocuous. You know, uh, I'm not crazy about that. But but if you don't put your name on for the extreme purpose of being able to say something and not ha face the consequences, mm -hmm. you know, then it's inexcusable. Well, and, I that, and, that, and, that, and what I like to see, what my April Fool's joke would be, that all of a sudden, when they posted a comment anonymously, their actual name would appear <laughs> there. And then they would understand why what they're doing is so wrong. Well, I would just... Sorry, I'm going to go. Just one thing is that uh, what I've told people that says, Andy, let me post something in your defense. I says, no, because when you argue with a fool, sometimes people won't know the difference. <laughs> okay, so stay right. out of it. Right. Anyhow, um, you know, we're really happy, Catherine, that you, oh, could, yes, you could join absolutely. us. Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah, because, you know, I don't think it's really an exa exaggeration, and I followed, you know, your recent career uh, since I, you know, really started at North County News mm -hmm. in in 2006 mm -hmm. and really it's been it's been rather meteoric you know you have to admit and if you don't admit <laughs> it I'm gonna say it anyhow so um, but uh, you know I, I know you start off you were chief of staff of course for assemblywoman Sandy Galef who was clearly one of the most popular assembly people we can know, I just right? introduce yeah. you sure. seven years you said behind the scenes you sure. work for her. correct what is the secret of her success she vanquishes every opponent yeah. Yeah. and the people that yeah. could that quote unquote, could give her a run for her money, are scared to death to run against her. Yeah, What's the secret? Th I would say there's three, there's three things about Sandy that I think are, are, are exceptional. Um, number one is that she does not have a mean bone in her body. If you don't like Sandy Gale, if you can disagree with her on opinions, I don't agree with her on every single thing, but if you don't like Sandy Gale, if that's something about you. <laughs> because, <laughs> because she is such a kind, good person. I can... Just give a recent thing. Yeah. Now, you know Sandy and I don't agree politically, mm -hmm. but when I needed her presence at the Peaksville Town Council meeting dealing with the taxi mm -hmm. liability issue, she came. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. She came. The second Greg thing Ball did not, and yeah. I'm saying because I had asked both of them. Yeah. Greg Ball did not, but she came, and that, that shows the character. It really does. It really does. The second really marvelous thing about Sandy that I've long admired, even long before I worked for her, when I just knew her uh, through Austin events, and then uh, also she helped me when I be became interested in public service as an advocate. She yes. taught me a lot about how the New York State uh, government works. But the other thing about her is she has the highest level of intuitive intelligence mm -hmm. that I've ever seen in anyone. And I, by that, I don't mean she, she's very intelligent in every way. But she understands things so well, and she understands how pieces fit together. And then she the sees the big picture. She sees the big picture. And then the third thing is that you know she's in it for the right reasons. She's a hard worker. Yes, she brings yeah. baked goods to things. She's just in it to no, for right. the for the right reasons. And I think that people really acknowledge that. Mm -hmm. And it's very hard to go against Sandy in for those reasons. Your, yes, right. yeah. just, I'll like yeah. give, give Bruce back to you, <laughs> but in your now elective field, mm -hmm. what is the biggest lesson you took from her that you use? Well, I think that Sandy, I, I think that I, I'm so fortunate to have um, worked for her for as you many years mentor. as I did. You're, you're An lucky. excellent mentor. I always say to Sandy, the, the day I met her was one of the luckiest days of my life. But I think her, the, the way she looks at issues, the way she frames issues, she always says she uses the League of Women Voters model, basically looking at the validity of both sides, trying to see the logic in in both arguments of a, of a situation, and her willingness to reach out and work with people, even with people who don't agree with her. I think, uh, I hope to emulate that in my in, in all of my roles. I'll let Bruce go yeah. back. Okay. <laughs> back to Bruce. And by the way, just, you know, uh, p piling on in the most positive <laughs> way possible. But, um, you know, to me, just summing up what we just said is that she... You know, Sandy really radiates human kindness, she right? Does. But she combines that, to go back to the theme at the beginning of the show, she combines that with making it obvious she's nobody's fool, right? Right. So, I mean, and that's a rare combination to She's be also to very independent. Her. I mean, she's an independent. That's what I'm saying. That, that's what yeah. I'm saying. You know, yeah. I'm yeah. friends with the Peaks of Democrats, yeah. Yeah, a lot of the members, and sometimes she could drive them up the wall. <laughs> yeah. no, I'm saying but that, in that, the yeah. end, they come around because you right. can't right. fight right. her logic. Right. right. In the end, right. when you get away from the partisanship, Right. right. In right. the edge, you knew she was right. Well, or even if you don't think she's right, you believe in the integrity of her process. Right. And that's that's right. sort right. of what I'm talking about. And that's what I really but see. But she can like. give them fits. I yeah, love and it. That, and that's why she's so effective. Yeah. You know, it's, analogous, it's analogous to the proverbial country lawyer. Mm -hmm. You don't see them coming. Right. You know, and they're sharp, uh, sharp as a pack. So, um, uh, so, Catherine, you know, you very quickly went from being Sandy's chief of staff. And mm -hmm. as you just said, you couldn't have had a better mentor, right? 
to being a village trustee, right? Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think you've ever lost an election, have you? I, I did run for the seventh grade student council. Oh, whoa, wow, that. Well, well, we don't want to go into that. That's <laughs> that still hurts. <laughs> right. okay. But no, I mean, uh, in your, no, adult, in your my adulthood, adult life, right, I've right. won every election. So, you know, you, you've been a village trustee a couple of terms, <laughs> then mm -hmm. you stepped in and under somewhat unfortunate circumstances yeah. to become the um, supervisor of Correct. Uh, awesome. of Ossining. Um And then you ran for uh, county legislator and, and won very, mm -hmm. you know, decisively and impressively. And, Thank you. Um, and so, uh, you know, you, that's all taking place, what, let's say, uh, since you left Sandy's office, it's only been like four, th three, four years. Right. Well, right? I was a village trustee while I was working for Sandy because okay. that's oh, a part time right. job. So it's yeah. been. It's, I've no, been for the audience, a village yeah. trustee would be equivalent to a council person in most of the other neighboring correct. towns. Correct. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. So it's on the policy making board. It's a part time job. There's a stipend, okay. but right. uh, it's not a full time job. That was job. under Mayor Hanauer. Right? That was yeah. cr well, right. actually, I won. I ran and won with Gene Napolitano. Okay. Uh, he was the first mayor okay. I served under, and then I served under Miguel Hernandez for a short All time, right. and, and then and then Bill and I were running mates. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, who's the current mayor? Yeah. yeah, the current mayor. So how did you wind up overstepping him? He should have been, you know, you know in, in the pecking order. Of, you know, how did you wind up jumping ahead of him in the in the leapfrog race? Yeah. Or he just happy where he is? What do you mean for assembly? I mean for uh, yeah, legislator. Yeah. Well, right. I, I don't know that Bill had an interest in running for legislator oh, okay, actually, right. but I think that Bill is another. Um, person who is very, very, very well suited to his role as mayor. He and loves he loves it. Mayor. Oh, God. We met he him a couple of times. No, he doesn't. Because he really and enjoys it. it. I tell job, you, yeah. he's, he's a very good representative of Austin yes. in the sense that he is always out there. He loves yes. talking to right. people, what we were yes. talking about before. And so I think he's, I, I don't know for sure, he hasn't ever told me, but I think he's pretty happy where he right. is. And I know he's planning to run for re-election. I believe he's planning to run for re-election again this huh? year. Right. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. so 60, right. when we had John test on the show yeah. last year. Who is? Who's the, the <laughs> legislator <laughs> of District uh, 1. 1, yeah. right. Representing and a peak skill in New York. Right, right, and he was a mayor. Of right. Part of Portland. And Portland. you were a supervisor. Correct. And now you're both in the legislature. Yeah. And when he came in, he was low man on a totem pole. And right. now you... It's got to be a culture shock. It is a little bit of a culture shock. You know, uh, because I have worked in many different areas of government, I do have a sense of how government works. So I'm glad to have had that expertise, especially working in the assembly, because the county is more like the way the New York State government runs than it is the way a local municipality runs. It is not that dysfunctional. It's not that dysfunctional, <laughs> but I mean the structure. <laughs> okay, okay. okay let's, let's I agree with you, it's <laughs> not that dysfunctional. It's not really dysfunctional at all, except for a, a few little uh, pit hole potholes that right. are, you know that are that are happening but um the uh, it is hard to move from being the chief executive, especially in a town like Austin, which is a fairly small municipality. Right. My hands were in everything. Right. So and and that's there's a degree of um, security in in that right. because you know you, you're involved in every decision you know all of the players so it I would say the biggest culture shock is just learning the learning the new system I will say that my colleagues on the legislature both sides of the aisle are are very welcoming and they are very helpful and I think that that aids in the transition well, but yeah. you have to you know you have to build consensus you have to do things as when you're when you're the low man on the totem pole you have to use different skills to get things done yeah, but talk, <laughs> talk about building consensus you know my next question question, Bezo, was going to be, let's talk about the Hatfields and McCoys, mm -hmm. by which, of course, I mean the Democratic majority and the county legislator and the county mm -hmm. executive's office. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, that's not just an act, right? I mean, that, I mean, it, there is such a chasm between the two. Um, and this recent, we'd like to ask you, Catherine, from your perspective about this recent turn of events where uh, much has been made about no, but what is it, no Republican was appointed to a committee and mm -hmm. even people who were volunteers were not even asked to come back as volunteers, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so w right. so what's that kind of partisanship well, let about? Well, let me do the volunteer yeah. thing first. Yeah. I mean, that is very that's very common. There's always turnover in volunteers. In fact, several members of the county planning board were just recently, uh, you know, uh, not invited to return, and, that, and that's really normal in the turnover and how volunteer committees get get staffed. Um, as far as the committee chair goes. You know, I don't have too much insight into that. There was a decision to consult. There was a, there's a lot of committees at the county level. There was a decision to consolidate some of them, uh, but that is that is a, a a decision that was made. You know, at, at a higher level th th than me. Although right. I will say, when I came in, when I got elected, I went in to see Chairman Ken Jenkins, and and I asked for 
a good committee. <laughs> right, right. Well, okay, so right. I think that part of it is so that... So what committee did you get? I got government operations, which is an excellent, excellent, okay. excellent yeah. committee. There's a lot of topics that come under that. And as a former chief executive That's, of a local yeah. municipality, it was a natural fit yes, for me. Right, right, so right. Um, it's, it's been great. Uh, we t the committee structure basically started at around the end of January, so it's, it's only been a few weeks. But we have really delved into a lot of significant topics on the committee, and it's been a great learning experience, although... Somewhat of a learning curve for me. Uh, now I'm going to uh, uh, probably uh, put you in a spot Okay. Here. And I, and <laughs> but only because it came up this morning. Sure. I mean, last night the news broke. They, they finally had a tier six right. deal. And Jenkins, the county, uh, the board of chairman, chairman, sends out a press release lauding this agreement. Right. Though the agreement exempts cops and firemen even from increased contributions to their plans. Mm -hmm. And it only deals with new hires. Mm -hmm. Why is everybody jumping up and down and cheering? What does it do for you this year? It doesn't do anything for us this year, or very little, depending. It, only if municipalities hire will those new will those new employees be tier six employees. So, municipalities and governments are, and school districts are really not doing that much hiring. The people are jumping up and down and cheering because it's hard to change anything. Yeah, but now this was. I knew you were, and I was ready yeah, for this yeah. one because you work with Sandy Galef yeah. and you know that nothing is carved in stone and that's how we got up to tier six. What? That all these other tiers yeah. that they had that were the answer to the problems of money got sweetened by the legislature. Every election season yeah. came by. Yeah. What's to stop them um, from doing the same thing to this. Oh, well, I think it, uh, I think this, the sweetener, it's, it's interesting. I just came from the Winter Westchester County Association breakfast yeah. with the delegation, and this question That's why out. I'm asking you and, this. Uh, I figured Andrea, this was... Andrea Stewart-Cousins had um, a lot of historical uh, background that she shared with that group. The, the tier, I, I'm in tier four right. um, myself, and I, because I'd worked for Sandy for seven years and now I've been in elected office, I just recently hit the 10-year mark, so my contribution, my 3% contribution stopped. That was actually a sweetener that was put in place by Governor Pataki right. uh, about 10 years ago or right. 12 years ago. Um, really, what's required to not have that happen is political courage. Right, we yes, need to make exactly sure right. Right. that, you know, we're, we're, we're put, we put in this Tier 5, we put in this Tier 6, uh, to answer really specific economic problems, and we need to learn from the history of the past and not, and not have that happen. Right. Now, is that going to be easy? No, it's not going to be easy. It's, it's very tempting for politicians on both sides of the aisle, in the governor's chair, in the right. legislature, to, uh, to seek to reward people who work for New York State or for, who work for the municipalities, not just for political reasons, but because there's a sense that if we're doing well, they should share in the doing wellness of the, of the state. But that's how you yeah. get in the predicament right. where we're But it is, how you, it is how you get in the but predicament you know, that we're in Not, not, not only now. that, but uh, you know, I, I think it's, it's fair to say, and you know, I, I don't have research in front of me to haul out right now, but using you know just our knowledge of, of current events and what goes on out there and you get out among the populace mm -hmm. that in the court of public opinion what's happening is that there's a rising tide of opposition and resentment towards the unions forget about elected officials i'm talking about the average person mm -hmm. you know who isn't a member of public the union. sector right. unions be specific uh, public yes i'm right. sorry public right. sector but there is clearly when you talk to people more and more resentment i mean how do you justify if a public union employee is making a salary comparable to a private sector employee, so we're talking about comp you know comparable incomes, that that the public sector employee uh, union member is contributing so much less mm -hmm. to their health care. Mm -hmm. how, how do they justify that? Well, I you know I can I think I need to reframe yeah. that, which is basically that you know public sector s public sector salaries um, have been increasing. That is true. Right. Um, I don't know if it's a, if it's an exact comparable. I know that I'm a big disappointment to my uh, MBA graduating class, having chosen to make less and less <laughs> in every job that I have had since I've left the private sector. But um, I think that how, why people don't understand why this is such a hard problem is, is two reasons. Number one, in the 1930s, the New York State Legislature passed this law. Uh, pa it became part of the Constitution. It was a constitutional change that said once benefits are given, they can only be rolled back, clawed back by a, a change in the Constitution. Now, it's difficult to change any Constitution. The, they New don't State, even try. the New York State Constitution requires passage in two in two um, separate sessions, right. and then a referendum. Now, when you think about who's going to vote in a referendum like that, you say that public sentiment is against um, 
Public, well, I'm, I'm saying it's public rising. Sector. People well, are resenting yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. No, and I right. accept that. I yeah, think that that right. is in fact true. Yeah. But I think if it comes to a vote where um, you're going to vote for your neighbor to not have the deal by which they entered their employment, that might be a harder I'm vote than you sure think. I'm not sure because yeah, that right. might be a harder vote. I'm not right. sure about <laughs> that. That's a good point. Yeah. Because in the private sector, my mother, IBM, right, right. she had a deal when she went out. Yeah. IBM has reneged on that deal in the last ten years more than you want to know. And my mother could say, well, if I I've got to deal with a company that's reneging on the deal. Since when is somebody whose salary right. depends on my money right. get to have theirs carved in stone? Or, or right. she might right. say, right. or she might say right. that stunk that that happened to me, and I'm not going to do she it. She may the next say it's stunk, but she's going to say yeah. it's going to happen know. to you. I, I, don't, I don't know. I, I mean, well, I feel like we all understand the nature of contracts. We all understand that this was the deal that was entered into, and it's difficult to break a deal. It's difficult in every. Yeah, I mean, that, that's true. And what's also true is when you're the employee of a company in, in the private sector and, you you know, there may be a salary freeze across the company, not right. uncommon. Right. And, because and you the still health, has a salary freeze, right, too. And because yeah. the health plan changes, the company has to ask you to contribute more and more. Yeah, yeah. You can't sit there and go, oh, you can't change it now. You can't. Of course they can. So right. to, Unless to you have a contract. Unless you have a contract. Yeah, okay. Right, right. <laughs> Unless you have a contract. You know, I, as a town supervisor, I dealt with three unions, um, and I was involved in negotiations with two of them, contract right. negotiations with two of them, the Teamsters and the CSEA. And one of the things that I did, and one of the things I think is the answer to this problem in the, in the more meta sense, is that all of the constituencies really do need to sit around the table. It's easier to do, much easier to do at a local municipality level, so I'm not being naive here. But need to sit around the table, look at, this, look at the economic realities that we face. Well, I had great success, honestly, not without some give and take, not without negotiating for several months, one year, one and one, more than a year, to say, I'm not lying to you. These are the economic realities. Here's the backup information. Analyze it. Have your people analyze it. But the reality is it's an untenable position. So I was able to get concessions from both of my unions that actually, I think, put the town in a much better economic but position right. for the but great my, future. You're now right. a county legislator, mm -hmm. though. And if I'm right that certain things don't need a constitutional change, with the, uh, like uh, in, uh, uh, an increased contribution to your pension or your medical, I don't think need a constitutional change. They, they absolutely I, do. I'm yeah. pretty sure that uh, no, uh, there in are New York parts. Are you talking about in New York New State York or State. in the county? No, in New York State, once you're in a tier, once you're in the pension system, that is considered a benefit. Benefits cannot be taken away without a constitutional Not taken amendment. away, not taken away. But I believe, because uh, uh, I remember covering this in one of my columns, yeah. that you can do something about the contribution amount. It may not be with med I mean maybe with it's either with medical or pension. I'm not sure, I don't remember which one that you don't need the constitution on because Bloomberg did it in the city. Well, the city, he, is, oh, the, city, the city is a little different, is, it, is yeah, different, right. but um, I don't think that that's correct. I think that court cases no. have said okay, that that's not correct. Anyway, but but, I, but the, you could do it with the with the consent of but, the government. But the right? whole point is yeah. everybody's jumping up and down. We're yeah. going to save eighty billion, not one hundred and thirteen billion, now because they excluded cops and firemen. Right. We're going to save eighty billion, but every budget is. Only good for that year. That's true. And That's being true. And, uh, w so, like I said, there is no save. Everybody's. I think it's a scam being perpetrated on an election year. Yeah. Populace saying, "Look what we accomplished," when actually nothing was accomplished except a headline. Yeah. Well, and I you're going to, as a legislator, yeah. you still got to deal. With what they did to you in Albany and pay the bill. No, that's true. That's true. And, and I think that that is a challenge for local governments. When you look at the bill, uh, the, the amount, the expenditures that local governments make, quite a bit of it is determined by New York state law. So and that you don't have really any say over. That is very true. I, but I disagree with you on one point. I do think that it is a step in the right direction. I think it's hard, like everything is hard, legislatively. Another question that came up at the County Association breakfast today was, why are there so, much, so many bills in New York State? And um, part of the reason why is that it takes so long to pass everything, and there's such a right. fight, and right. there's such strong voices on every side of an issue. So I do think that this will help in the long run. I think it's hard to quantify how much it's going to help because it's hard to it's hard to know for sure what will happen in the future. I, I, I'll make one quick prediction yeah. right. that this is not going to last past the next election cycle when they sweeten that. All oh, the economy's changed, and let's give them a little extra here. I bet you this right. doesn't even make it past the election.
So like, I, I, I want to get do tier on five first before, before I do but tier six. I want to go into one <laughs> thing now that's what? that got a lot of comments and a lot of feedback. What? You guys did not give yourselves a raise this year. Okay. Right. Yeah. Well, that. W and this yeah. is what I'm saying. What's the story? Because apparently you all came so to you an know, agreement on this. Maybe one. that should have also been the salute of the week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, seriously. Um, yeah. I, you know, as I said, I, I, I have a, I have a history of making um, choices that are not in my economic self-interest. <laughs> I moved from the private sector to work for Sandy, what? basically out of uh, love. I would I would have worked for her for free if I could have afforded to. And then, thank God you didn't tell her at the time. I did. I did. Uh. I said, Sandy, I would do. I would every day. I come to work grateful for this job. <laughs> but sure. um, the uh, every every step I've made ha has been has been less money. In fact, moving from town supervisor to the county board has, is less money for me as well. And when I was town supervisor, the first thing I did when I saw the economic condition that the town was in was I lowered my salary. I lowered it by ten percent, which on a salary of like seventy eight thousand was actually kind of. Some money. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And then I did, I did lower it the second year because um, we had a little deficit in our veterans budget, and I wanted to fill that. I didn't make my my board uh, r return their salary, which they did do the first year, but um, not not return it, but you know, reduce it. Yeah. Uh, but this the second year, I put I put some of my salary into the um, veterans budget, and then the third year, we also took a. Um, uh, a reduction and increased our contribution. So that was also a little bit mm -hmm. our health contribution because that was the result of our negotiations with CSEA. So um, I think that for people in the public sector, it's very important to lead by example. Yep. Yes. Turned out it was yeah. one of the few yeah. things you all agreed on. Yeah, right. yeah. But, but this is what I want to ask about, right, yeah. uh, Sorry. Catherine. And I know you know you, you uh, actually right before this were at a Westchester County Association event. Yeah. And they at Westchester County Associ Association led by. Bill Mooney, who you know does an excellent job, mm -hmm. uh, and the whole association, you know, is is uh, it doesn't just talk the talk, but they walk the walk when mm -hmm. it comes to helping the economy in Westchester sure, and businesses. Done a fabulous and job. to that point, yeah. you know, they they've announced this business accelerator. Yeah. The last I looked, and uh, maybe it's more, it's at least they have an initial fund of at least 150 million dollars. I think they said 175 okay, today. Okay, okay, so, so now it's, really it's 100. That several well. banks have ponied yep. up. Um, but then I recently heard, and, and uh, this just happened, so I, I didn't have time before mm -hmm. the show to check it out, that there were some Democratic legislators that actually were criticizing the business accelerator. But have you heard any of that talk? I don't or? think it was criticism of the idea. I think, I think it was just uh, wanting to set up the structure that would make it most effective. I didn't hear any criticism of this notion of a... Of a of an oh, but the way it was done? Is that no, no, not oh. even the way oh. it was done. Just the the idea of you ha you know you have to set up the structure to make sure that the the one of the things that we worry about in government, basically because we hear this from people, right. is that there needs to be transparency. So just to make sure that if an IDA is set up, that it is done in a way that does have some financial transparency. No, oh, okay. ask, right. we only yeah. running out of time. I got to ask you one question. Well, this very quickly. Yes, you <laughs> always does. Yes. What do you think about the new lines where they put part of us in the I think it's terrible, and I've written to the governor uh, about it. I really think that it will it will be bad for Austin. It'll make us sort of the the stepchild. I won't say ugly stepchild because Austin's very beautiful, but the stepchild of this legislation. It of just this makes no right. sense right. to me. You got to go across the. Yeah, it's like there's it really a river right. separates you. It two really doesn't. Energies. It really doesn't. And if I could give a shout out to uh, my former colleague Sue Donnelly, who's now the town supervisor, yes. she's my college sure. colleague on the village board, yeah. and my former colleague Peter Tripodi, on who's on the town council. Yes. I think that the town board has really done an excellent job in bringing this situation. Oh yeah, I've printed. Back, I, yeah. Well, yeah. on my blog, Pushing that's what work I've printed. Oh, okay. Before we close. I know, what, I, I know. We, we have, uh, Baz and I are proud to say thanks mm -hmm. to Denise Wilson. Extremely to Denise Wilson that Bruce the Blog Goes Bazo, which you are watching, has its own YouTube channel and Facebook page. And <laughs> so all you have to do is search Facebook Bruce Goes Bazo right. or YouTube search Bruce Goes Bazo. We wanted to shorten it to make it easy right. for all of you. Right. No, no so, the blog. It's right. Bruce Goes Bazo on both. And also, again, just a, a, a footnote that the business accelerated, just to clarify for one second, uh, is to help start up businesses. Correct. To help them get up on correct, their feet. Correct. I mean, it has to be obviously a very viable business plan. And right. So, but it's an investment to oh, incubate. No, it's okay. I, I think it's a great idea. Yeah. I think it's a great idea. I'm so glad to have you yeah. here. Yeah. But these were my opinions, and you may beg And when difference. Bruce the Block listens, people talk. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Thank you. Thank for you. Thank you very much.